So I'm here on Acadia Beach, which is one of my favorite spots to come and pray and reflect and just look at the mountains and the water and the city. And I was thinking about the fact that I'm starting my second year of school. And just looking back on my first year of school and some of the things that I learned, obviously I learned things about history and theology and the Bible, but I'm thinking more in terms of what I learned about education and my own unique experience with education. You know, coming to a graduate school like this was a really big deal for me because I've never really been to school before. I was homeschooled my entire life. One thing I've realized is that I have had this kind of deep-seated fear <laughs> of school because it's foreign to me because I never went to school. I mean, I, I remember when I was a kid, my mom would actually try to instill fear in me because she didn't want me to be outside and this is back when homeschooling was slightly illegal and so she didn't want me to be like seen by the authorities or reported by our neighbors and so we, she would talk about the big yellow school bus monsters that came and grabbed the kids each day and went to school and she kind of you know described it in these very like Orwellian 1984-ish you know you're a robot kind of a thing and so I've just always been like sort of nervous around uh, institutions of education <laughs> and now reflecting on that I, I realize in a, in a new way how unique that is that I didn't go to school that I didn't go to college that I didn't go to seminary I bypassed all those things and really put into practice what my dad espoused which was delight directed study and the idea of letting your interests and your delights motivate and fuel the things that you study and I think there's a lot to be said for that. I think that um, what my dad invested in me, the ideas that he uh, taught me, were really valuable in terms of not just waiting for a diploma or a certificate to give you permission to do certain things, but to actually go out there and learn what you need to learn and jump into doing. And that's kind of what I did with writing and magazine publishing and then even ministry. You know, I found an opportunity to get on the job training and I was given incredible opportunities to lead at a young age and to preach and to learn what it means to be a pastor in a very hands-on way. But I think coming to graduate school has also shown me a lot of the weaknesses in that approach because when you're just directed by your interests and your delights, you end up being lopsided in different ways. You know, you only study the things that you want to study. It's easy to be lazy about certain things. There's a level of discipline required um, from higher education that is really important. It's important in shaping you and in training you. I think the other thing that I've learned is that it's so helpful to be in a setting where you're exposed to a lot of different voices because when you just jump into uh, certain opportunities or a church to minister into or whatever it might be I guess it could be a business it could be a lot of different things if you don't really push yourself you can end up only hearing certain voices and so you end up not having wrestled with certain ideas not having confronted conflicting viewpoints and I think that's been a weakness for me and that's something that I've loved about being uh, here in Vancouver at Regent that I'm hearing people coming from many different points of view. I'm hearing from people who have different theological viewpoints, from different church backgrounds, uh, different experiences just from living in different nations, people coming from many different places to attend school here. And I really, I really see how valuable this is, how important it is to get that liberal education and to be challenged and to be stretched in these different ways. So I think that part of where I am is being able to appreciate my own unique upbringing and be able to say that was amazing. I, I wouldn't want to do anything differently in the sense that I'm so grateful for those experiences. I'm so grateful for the opportunities that God has given me. But then I'm also 
I think, humbled, and I recognized a lot of the deficiencies that came with the route that I took. And so I think I have a much greater appreciation for uh, seminary, for higher education, for really taking the time to be disciplined by study, to develop skills, to listen, to grow in ways that you, you won't grow if you bypass that phase of training and education. One of the things that I've really enjoyed about being at school is just being a student and being able to take off the, the pastor hat that I've been wearing for so long. I've been pastoring for almost 17 years and I've just realized that if you're not careful, you can get into this mindset that you're always trying to fix people, you're always trying to give them some kind of spiritual insight. And at times I realized that that kind of blocked me from just enjoying people and just relating to them as a fellow human being. And so it's been so cool um, being a student and just being a normal person and relating to these other fellow students and they don't really think I'm anything special and I'll be in you know different study meetings and there are a lot smarter people in the room than me and I'm the person that's just trying to get information and get help. At times, you know, I'll have an idea and people will say, eh, that's not that great of an idea. And I realize, oh my gosh, I know I've been so used to being the, <laughs> the guy that everybody's working for for so long and it's so great to just be really a nobody, just another student, another learner. And um, I think that's just helping me to be a better human being. It's really healthy for me. And I appreciate this unique season of being able to devote myself to study. I really am grateful for it. I know that it's a gift. I know it's something that not everybody has the opportunity to do. And so I'm really, I'm really grateful, grateful to God. I do just want to say that I really appreciate all of you who have followed along uh, as I've made these videos for YouTube. It's been a great way for me to be able to test out ideas that I'm thinking and just creatively uh, try new things on a different medium. And so I really appreciate all the feedback you've given and the comments that you've left and the encouragement you sent my way. It's meant a lot to me. Thanks for watching and if you're just stopping by, Hey, make sure to subscribe so that uh, you keep following along. I still have about eight or nine more videos to film before I'm allowed to cut off my beard, which I am, I'm definitely uh, getting ready to, to cut this thing off. <laughs> have a great day. See you next time.